What's going on guys, this is Dan Watson, learningcameras.com, and you can check out this Sony RX10 Mark II. We will have the full resolution RAW files and JPEG files posted up at the website at learningcameras.com, so definitely download those. You don't have to deal with compression, put them in a Lightroom, edit them yourself, and make sure that you agree with the with the results of this test. I want you to be able to test these out yourself so everything is going to be made available for you so you can really put the camera through its paces yourself without actually owning it. Now let's take a look at this camera and I must say that it's largely unchanged on the outside from uh, from what you're used to if you've ever seen this camera but basically you're getting an unbelievable zoom range up to 200 millimeters and an f2.8 constant zoom which is great for such a small camera. Now you are dealing with a smaller sensor camera, so this is not going to be one of your larger, even a micro four thirds you're left with a one inch sensor inside of this camera. And take that with a grain of salt. I mean, it, it is going to take pictures more like what your point and shoots are capable of. A very good one at that with all of your controls, but more of your point and shoot. Now the great thing is that all of these buttons are here if you're ever coming from a pro camera and want to shoot manual. They're all exactly where you would want them. Uh, no issues at all being able to operate this camera very, very quickly, even on manual mode. Pretty much everything is customizable, which is normal in Sony fashion, and uh, everything just functions like it should. You'll even find your autofocus controls on the front of the camera, which is very uh, kind of Nikon D810 and some of your other pro-end cameras. So it's kind of easy to miss on a, on a more consumer-level camera and a little bit more of a pro-end type feel. You do get an articulating screen, however, it is not a touch screen, which is very disappointing on a camera like this because it just makes interacting with the camera much more simple and quick. Uh, so I would have liked to see that on this, and Sony doesn't have it on pretty much all of their cameras, so it's not a surprise, but I definitely would have liked to see this. And it makes focusing in video, photos, and using live view just a whole lot easier than having to hit buttons and activate your focus points. Actual image quality from the camera was very impressive for a smaller sensor camera. It, it When you zoom into 100%, you're definitely going to see that this is not your pro end camera. But when you back off a little bit and take a look at really the images, how you would use them uh, when you're using this for family type pictures and everything like that. I took it on a trip to SeaWorld with my family. It worked extremely well for that. Getting your images at 200 millimeters at f2.8, obviously with a smaller sensor, so uh, you're going to have a little bit more in-depth of field. However, you're able to capture the action that's even a little further away, and you're able to open it up for a decent amount of light to come through that lens and be able to shoot at slower shutter speeds than you could on some of your other ones. So this was really nice to be able to operate with the amount of equipment that I had and be able to shoot at a, an unbelievable range from extremely wide all the way to 200. So great range on that and it was really perfect for a situation like this. The focus system worked pretty well for me. I had no problem capturing the action and uh, the only limitation is if you're shooting at f2.8 you do have a max shutter speed of 1 1600th of a second which if you go uh, higher on your aperture will go up to 3200th of a second and then you have electronic shutters from there to limit your light. Uh, however 1600 was a bit limiting uh, for some of these quick action shots at f2.8 so you're going to want to bump that up however if you're looking for just solid image quality for your family photos and things of that nature it's definitely there and if you're not at 100 percent the pictures look uh, fabulous and it, you can also stretch the dynamic range pretty well i mean i took a raw file and the shadows were very much underexposed but i kept the highlights in pushing that to 100 percent on the shadows really caused the image to pop and I didn't really see any issues. We didn't have any banding or anything like that. The noise was very well controlled on those images. So overall very good image quality for a point and shoot style camera. Now on the video side of things this is where the Mark II really shines over its predecessor and we're dealing with 4K video now up to 30 frames a second 1080p at up to 120 frames per second and you also have slow motion modes that start out at uh, 240 frames per second and go up to over 900. So one thing to keep in mind though is 240 frames per second is the maximum you're going to want to shoot and still get great results. So that's where I did most of my slow motion shooting on and I will say things look very good. I mean it's not quite as good as the full 1080p or 4k video but it's definitely very usable for most things and it's really a, just a neat thing to be able to shoot 240 frames per second on a camera such as this and get and get decent quality results. So uh, a very nice feature that you're not going to get from most of your other cameras. 
So, you know, overall, the video quality is amazing. 4K is very, very good in what we're used to seeing in higher-end cameras. You've got S-Log2. You even have built-in ND filters. You've got uh, your microphone and so inputs. And, and, and so it really felt like a, a, a decent video camera, and it enabled me to travel extremely light. I didn't even need an ND filter and be able to shoot very good quality video at any time exactly how I wanted to. Uh, without carrying a lot of equipment and and even having that same great range so whether you're using it for photo and video this camera definitely stood out overall Sony's done something really interesting with the RX10 II and and basically what they've done is combine an extremely good zoom range 24 to 200 f 2.8 in a camera that actually produces great image quality at 20 megapixels and combine that with video quality that you uh, typically haven't seen in a camera such as this and Overall, it just really completes the package from video, photo, and everything else in a small, smaller and lighter package than what we're seeing with many other cameras. And so, you know, it, it's not going to fit in your pocket or anything like that, but if you don't mind something a little bit bigger that's going to fit in a bag or a purse, this is really an all-in-one camera that truly lives up to that name. If you're a pro and shooter and want to shoot manual only, you have all the controls that you need to really take this thing and maximize it. I do wish it had a touch screen. Uh, also, I $1,300 is really up there for a camera that's still kind of in the point and shoot for image quality. Sure, it's a great point and shoot, but it is still point and shoot. And so you're going to get that smaller sensor. It's a one inch sensor. It's not the smallest in the world, but definitely below what we've seen in other cameras. But you are going to benefit from that crazy zoom range. And Sony really went all out to try to limit the amount of things that they were withholding from this camera. So you're definitely going to get pretty much everything that you would want as far as features and connections, wireless, uh, Wi-Fi and NFC connectivity. So, uh, you know, your autofocus is going to keep up with just about anything and you have your slow motion features. So, uh, you know, the way I see it is this. It, it does seem a little bit overpriced and Sony is able to command that because nothing else is going to do what this does. And so if that is a price that you can afford and you really want an all-in-one camera, this is going to be the way to go. It is truly an all-in-one that doesn't make you long for more. And, you know, that's it. Again, download the images, and you can check them out for yourself at learningcameras.com. Take a look at it, and, and let me know your results in the comments below. Feel free. I love to answer those emails. You can check me out on Facebook at Learning Cameras. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. So definitely communicate and let me know your thoughts on it. If you have any questions, also feel free to let me know. Very curious. Love the discussion. So uh, that's it, and uh, we'll have some more coming up soon.